HPM is impacting policy and public health from climate to democratic rights. HPM is about creating a bigger community than just the one that you find yourself in. HPM will lead to creating really equitable and sustainable health systems both here in the U.S. and around the world. We're the future of public health and we work with faculty and peers every day to translate research into policy. Policy typically changes inch by inch, you know, little by little, shaped by research, shaped by smart people trying to do the right thing. Here in HPM, we try to give those smart people who are policymakers and those smart people who are leading organizations, we try to give them a toolkit. How to respond, you know, when unexpected things happen. How to respond to a pandemic. The Department of Health Policy and Management and the Mailman School of Public Health is committed to producing high quality research. But then there are a variety of ways that we try to use that research to sort of have an impact on policy and practice. It could be that we give a talk. We could write a white paper. We could meet with staff. Who are the relevant players and how can we reach them in a way that can make a difference? We have to understand the business side of medicine and not just the clinical side. I'm currently working on a paper that looks at private equity investments into fertility clinics. Private equity could come in and provide capital that is needed to grow the practice, which could improve volume and therefore access to care. On the other hand, the private equity business model is built around building short-term returns for shareholders, which could put an emphasis more on profitability and therefore lead to an increase in prices and unnecessary services. More research is really needed to understand how it's changing in practice. We know that the U.S. has a very high maternal mortality rate and about a third of those deaths occur in the postpartum period. By showing that there's so much uninsurance that happens in this period after birth and showing how that can affect women's access to care, I've been able to contribute to the policy debate about how we can expand coverage options for postpartum people in the U.S. We've been actually able to show the extent of the issue around postpartum uninsurance with you know, timely data. We're putting it in the hands of policymakers when they need it to advocate for the changes, the legislative changes that they want to see. The United States and most of the world are rapidly aging. The aging index is a quantitative measure of how a country or a region is adapting to the aging of its society. We looked at the 34 OECD countries and we were able to rank them according to each of these five domains and then an overall score. You can say, okay, we're not doing well with respect to volunteerism, but Finland and Norway are doing really well. What are they doing? I am a lawyer by training and then eventually transitioned to teaching. I never heard that there were black surgeons during the Civil War. And that led me to write a book about medical care generally for African Americans. Through all of that, this class called Untold Stories was born. The students themselves pick and find a story that they themselves didn't know much about. We have created a web page for the class itself that will roll out these stories every year that the class is taught. I think we have a program that's unique and that really can prepare students in a, in a sort of important way to enter the, the public health and the healthcare workforce. In my primary career, I work as a physician. I went back to Columbia to the Mailman School of Public Health to uh, get a public health degree. I took uh, a class my first semester uh, at Columbia at the Mailman School with Professor Michael Sparer on government and health policy. As a state senator now, I used what I learned in my public health program every single day. And I've actually invited Professor Spare, I think at this point twice, to come to public forums that I've held because I think that the entire state is better served when we're all better informed. I started at Columbia 25 years ago with a vision for a career in health policy and health law. I've worked in state government, the federal level for a member of Congress, also being adjunct faculty here at Columbia. I'm engaging with really smart students, teaching them about the ways in which public health channels through government so that they feel connected enough to the legal system to fully reach their potential as public health professionals. We have a, a student body uh, that is engaged, 
that's interested, that networks, that participates with each other. We bring the data, we bring the findings, and then work with the students to say, well, given these findings, what policy would you recommend? They come to me with questions of like, how can we change healthcare? Like, how do we change this problem? Um, and so I'm so inspired by their enthusiasm and trying to help them understand. I not only work with the students, but they teach me and I teach them and we have uh, a collaborative uh, relationship. I just love putting the tools into the hands of our really passionate students so that they can make a difference when they ultimately leave Mailman. HBM has a great selection of classes where I can learn so much. I experience mentorship from other students, alumni, and faculty. I feel like I have the resources, the pipeline, and the individuals necessary to network and be a force for change. Whether it's consulting or administration, we're prepared to hit the ground running as soon as we graduate.